turn over the floor to Svetlana Berg Eugenia. Bird Eugenia, yes. Bird Eugenia, <laughs> all right. Professor at the University of Freiburg in Germany, and she's going to tell us about technosignatures and reflected light. Yes, uh, thank you very much for inviting me to give this talk. Uh, it's a very exciting conference, and it's great that we can have it, even in these times. So I'd like to continue a little bit uh, discussion we had yesterday uh, about biosignatures and technosignatures, and... Uh, uh, so some uh, ideas that in fact we can detect them both simultaneously and uh, we here on earth developed our uh, reflected light vision this is remote sensing with our eyes and we can clearly distinguish between biosignatures and technosignatures on earth and this is one example here when we look we see clearly dominating biosignatures but with some uh, experience I like one can start to see technosignatures here. Uh, these are actually fields there, those uh, agricultural parts of the fields. But uh, more obvious parts are, of course, uh, this village, for instance, uh, which is uh, challenging to detect at a large distance, but uh, with a close up images, we can clearly see some kind of technosignatures here. And uh, again, uh, if we look at other parts of Earth, we can clearly detect uh, biosignatures, which are grown up by people, uh, like, like uh, also a technosignature. So these are both at the same time, bio and technosignatures. These are, by the way, tulip fields, which are beautiful in, uh, in Holland. And um, next uh, would be... A, so I'm not sure if this is disturbing, but next example is this uh, interesting building and, and the houses we also try to pull down with the help of plants. Uh, this is like a symbiosis again between biosignatures and technosignatures. And so it's uh, possibly that we will not find planets with just uh, technosignatures. It will be always a combination of bio and technosignatures. And since we are in the reflected light we see both so that means that when we do search uh, for life signatures in reflected light we will probably find both if they exist on other planets so uh, and here is a contrasting examples uh, of biosignatures and technosignatures in reflected light is a uh, is this heavily urbanized uh, area and heavily agricultured area um, and um, so what I would like to emphasize here is that what kind of observables we, we can actually detect uh, when we look in reflected light. And f first of all is albedo, and we can study atmospheres of exoplanets with the albedo, definitely. And... Uh, so many. Is it, is it disturbing, this picture? Not sure. That's very uh, Like this. It, yes, and um, that we can also distinguish solid liquid surfaces with the albedo features. Uh, we, we can detect spectra in reflected light. These are uh, chemical composition uh, of the surfaces and, and um, atmosphere, what we can decipher. And polarization is one of my favorite subjects. Uh, we can get uh, surface roughness or smoothness. So basically we can, with uh, highly polished surfaces, we can be sure that this is not a natural surface, but, um, but artificially made surface. Uh, and also particle composition on the surface and in the atmosphere and geometrical shapes of the objects we investigate in reflected light. So there is a lot of information one can get and that's why, of course, we evolutionarily have this advantage uh, to see the reflected light and distinguish objects. So what about uh, other planets? If we look in reflected light, we showed that uh, if we have a biosignatures, uh, well-known uh, biopigments, um, which are uh, helping uh, uh, with photosynthesis uh, um, in plants and uh, single cell organisms, um, also actually in our bodies as well. So we uh, have 
uh, studied in the laboratory some samples um, to detect um, spectra uh, in the intensity and polarized light. And we found out that biopigments are extremely well distinguished, like shown in this low panel in the polarization uh, signal in the blue light where they optimized blue in optical here light where they optimize to absorb most of the light while in the red light they reflect most of the light and and then that's the, we also see these differences but they're less pronounced because they are uh, also having this reflected infrared light here and um, uh, the conclusion of this study was that if we are lucky to find to, to find Earths, Earth-like planets with a lot of vegetation, say up to 80%, then unresolved surface of a planet would be a, uh, well, uh, uh, the life on such planets would be well detected. But if it's less than 80%, and if there are clouds and some other uh, non-biological uh, structures, then uh, unresolved planets are not uh, really uh, um, obvious to us whether they have life or not. And therefore, one of the challenges I, I have undertaken is to uh, develop a technique uh, to resolve surfaces of exoplanets by analyzing uh, light curves reflected from exoplanets. And uh, this technique we called exoplanet surface imaging or EPSI uh, based on analysis of these light curves com combined with the spin of the planet with, with its orbital modulation of the planet brightness as shown here as a simple example published in this paper. Uh, this technique, of course, is not new and it was used for oh, more than a century now, proposed more than a century ago first uh, by Russell to study reflected light uh, and surfaces of objects in the solar system. It's been successfully used for many decades since then. And in exoplanetary research was also uh, many ideas and many papers, uh, which I cite here, but not all of them, obviously. And a very striking example I really liked is that this first image of Pluto was uh, obtained with such a technique here uh, on the left. You can see this is maximum entropy map uh, recovered of the Pluto, recovered from the light curve. And this is the Pluto map obtained, obtained by New Horizons with, with the direct imaging. And uh, this is the picture I have simulated from uh, from data taken by New Horizons into the light curve and then recover it. So we can see that there is a, a very nice resemblance of uh, bright and light uh, features. They are positioned very well. And if at the same time we would have a spectral information of these features, we would be um, able to determine the com surface composition uh, of the structures on, on the planet which is uh, resulting in this albedo and chemical composition maps of planets. So we made a, a similar example from using the albedo maps from Earth as shown here. And we generated light curves with a very high signal to noise and uh, plenty of data just to test how it works. And we obtain very nicely resolved continents uh, and albedo features on continents, so some high albedo features on continents here. Um, and if we do it in, in several spectral bands, as I said, in several wavelengths, uh, in this case, we used only four uh, broadband uh, measurements, like in a photo camera, one can use RGB plus uh, infrared. Then from these four images, one can combine, uh, com compose a um, uh, colored photograph of, uh, of the exoplanet. And this is how Earth would be seen from from uh, Alpha Sen uh, with a 20 meter telescope. And we could see, distinguish the features as uh, forest in Siberia with this red edge and the uh, desert in, in, in Sahara, desert uh, feature with the minerals um, corresponding to, to this uh, desert and ocean signatures and ice cap. So this, there is a hope that we can, uh, with large enough telescopes, we can resolve exoplanetary surface in, in the solar neighborhood and uh, get the characterization of them, whether there's life or some geological interesting features or even technical signatures. 
So checklist signatures could be something, uh, sur surface structures resulting from geoengineering, uh, which could have some weird shape, uh, and they can have natural albedo since we also undertake some measures here to construct structures as I showed in that building, combined uh, plants and um, architectural designs uh, from, from concrete. Uh, so this kind of structure, which we see now at, uh, uh, in Dubai, uh, but increased to planetary scale, would be recoverable with such technique uh, in principle. This would be original map on the top and recovered map at the bottom. There are, of course, uh, if you don't see the original map, one can have a very good imagination to, to see this Palm Island. But um, yeah, so hopefully uh, with longer studies, we will get, uh, in principle, if, if you continue studying the same planet for some long time, one can accumulate information um, and uh, recover the the structures with a higher contrast. So another idea is for geoengineering is to have weird shapes or regular structures and with high, high albedo uh, features, for instance, like uh, also done here to reflect light uh, and cool down the domes uh, and, and this living uh, structures, which we also do, we paint uh, roofs of our houses in low latitudes uh, to reflect heat from houses. For instance, in the valley, that is required actually. So, and um, on on high high rise buildings, in Germany, it's required to grow grass on high rise buildings. So we we undertake these measures, and so such uh, highly reflecting features, they would be also detectable if they are pretty large, not these small domes, but uh, very large structures, and. Uh, Everything what we talk about here today, today and yesterday was actually, we talk about this extrapolation from human uh, attempts to conquer the nature and um, that so far we have. We, yes, we scale up everything what we do to try to simulate life on other planets. Uh, another example of scaling up is this solar panels uh, hanging in space and orbiting the Earth. Uh, that could be the regular structures, but with low albedo. An example of this was presented also in the paper. Uh, that here the advantage this, uh, that this such um, low albedo structures could be above clouds, uh, which are creating a very nice uh, contrast, uh, highly reflecting surface in contrast to low reflecting surface. Um, so that would be possible to reflect and uh, detect in principle. Uh, concerning the artificial illumination here, yes, as was in previous talk said that if we increase again scale up the night side uh, illumination, then this could be recovered as well with this technique. But again, we would see some kind of bright spots, which would be only possibly identify with the artificial light if we have a spectral signature like was shown in the previous talk. So the, this technique is really amazing when you have a spectral information in addition to spatial information. Well, just uh, this is not reflected light, but for completeness, I mentioned that thermal signatures can be also mapped because they are also localized to urban areas on Earth. And if we scale them up, they could be also mapped on other planets. And here, the largest uh, telescopes uh, we are building and planning to build, which would be able to use this technique for um, uh, to apply for nearby planets. And as I promised so to mention Colossus, it's a 75 meter uh, telescope with um, eight meter diameter uh, mirrors, uh, which are uh, segmented mirrors, uh, about 65 mirrors to fill up the aperture of this size. But the uh, precursor of it is this ExoLife Finder, which Jill mentioned in her talk, uh, developed by the Planck Foundation as well. And if you are interested in this telescope's designs and uh, why they looked at this, it's explained on that web page. So they designed for high contrast imaging of exoplanets and they would be able to uh, 
apply this technique for like collect the light curves uh, information and apply this technique. LUVOR is also will be, will also be capable of doing this even eight meter uh, design, but sixteen of course is much better. So briefly on targets to finish uh, this also in the paper, uh, we will be able with a smaller telescope to uh, this is one hour exposure time only on these plots. So this one earth size and four four earth sizes. So we'll see you you can see that if we go to larger super earths, then we have significantly more planets to be mapped with even 10 meter telescope. Uh, but uh, Earth-sized planets, they require 20 meter size telescope, roughly 15 to 20 as a minimum for a decent amount of planets. And Alpha Sand planets uh, would be really amazing if we discover them, especially in this binary A and B. For Proxima is difficult because it's small and faint. But uh, if we discover any planets in this binary, then it would be amazing, of course, to get maps of it. And this is even possible with telescope of six to 10 meters. So here the exposure also one hour. So here for signal to nice, we get more than one and that's already great because we can accumulate more data. Um, so finally take home messages. Uh, uh, from my point of view, indirect imaging of exoplanets is the next frontier to study their uh, structures uh, and uh, geology, biology, and technology on those exoplanets. And we can definitely detect biosignatures uh, and technosignatures together if they exist with the same technique. And uh, such technosignatures could be resolved, which I discussed. Thank you for your attention. Thank you.